Welcome back to Good Day. It's time for our Mother Knows Best panel, but I would like to let you guys know we have a winner for our Fox 31, our Good Day giveaway. Valencia Carrington has won four tickets to the American Idol concert that's going on this weekend. Again, Valencia Carrington, stop by Fox 31 Studios before tomorrow, or tomorrow, but no later than that, because before five tomorrow. Okay, getting with business now, we have, if you can see, an honorary mom today. Miss Debbie Sapp is joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Can you tell us a little about yourself? Well, I'm the mother of five, and I am a home birth midwife who's not practicing. I graduated from Ancient Art Midwifery Institute with honors in newborn and breastfeeding and herbs. And I'm now studying with Naturally Healthy to be a clinical herbalist. Very neat. So cool. A very, very unique. And I'm glad that we're able to bring your uh, point of view onto our Mother Knows Best segment today. Thanks for being here. Well, first off, we're talking about school lunches. So, you know, the ever, the ever increasing problem of do your kids trade their vegetables for the cupcake? Or, you know, how do you make sure they're eating what you're putting in their lunchbox? Well, don't believe them, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, my oldest son was in school. This was probably when he was in second or third grade. And I was packing lunches and very proud of, you know, I had a fruit and a vegetable and everything, a sandwich. And, and I went and had lunch with him. And, and, of course, his lunch box came back empty every day. Went and had lunch with him. And in <laughs> front of me, <laughs> I watched him trade all these things for, you know, cupcakes and chocolate cookies. And, and I just looked at him and he said, and it, well, he, he didn't realize he was doing anything that was horrifying me. <laughs> but, what but grade is that? This is second or third grade. Mm -hmm. Too so funny. Every, yeah, so he'd come home very proud. He'd empty his lunchbox, but he hadn't eaten any of it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do about that? Do you, how do you guys do lunches? I don't even know if my kids really trade that much. Um, I, I know that lunch is a waste a lot of times because mm. when they're at school, they yabber a lot, and the <laughs> teachers have to stay on top of them during the lunch period. Um, but I really don't have a problem with that. My son, he's like this big, and he <laughs> eats 24-7. So, um, no, but vegetables, they're not big on vegetables. And with them having to take a sack lunch, it's kind of hard to put the vegetables that I have in mind. They're not big at eating raw vegetables, mm -hmm. you know, or steamed vegetables like I am. Um, but I don't have a problem with it. Um, their lunch usually is a, a sandwich with some chips, um, you know, a, sna a small snack on the side of we'll dice up an apple and put it in the bag and some juice. Um, I try to get creative with their lunches, but they're not that open-minded. <laughs> <laughs> they're not. They're, they're not. They'll stick with chips and a sandwich any day. Yeah. yeah. And that's our ongoing thing, and you know, my situation is a little different because I my I take care of my nephew who's grown, but I still am his guardian. So, um, and and nutrition is a kind of an ongoing battle in our house. And so, what I want to put in his lunch is never what he, <laughs> he wants, wants in his yeah. lunch. You know, I want to put a nice little healthy meal and maybe some popcorn and an orange, and he would prefer chips and chips and chips and maybe a cookie, <laughs> and he would be good to go. And then the other thing is, he doesn't like to carry a lunchbox. So he carries a little plastic bag. So, yeah. you know, nothing comes home to me, so I never know what, exactly what has happened it? to it. And I do know a couple of times the meal has been eaten on the bus. Ah. So then he gets to school and oh it's no. lunchtime. And, and all his <coughs> friends give him ch chips and cookies and more chips sure. and more cookies. So, yeah, yeah it's a battle. It's, mm -hmm. it's ongoing. We're going to be back in just a moment talking more about school lunches. Stick with us. We're back talking school lunches this morning, and Debbie, you had some advice. You know, I find that if you have the child partner with you in making the decision, I want you to have a protein, I want you to have vegetables, I want you to have a fruit, I want you to have some kind of dairy. These are your options, mm -hmm. so which one do you want? Mm -hmm. And if you have enough options, good food options in the house, usually a child is going to choose some of those good food options, mm -hmm. because good food tastes good to the body. That's good. Great advice. What about the night before when you have been working all day, you are tired, and it's time to make the kids' lunches? You don't want to spend an hour in the kitchen again, you know, preparing for the next day. How do you make it convenient, affordable, and nutritious for your kids and for you? Well, I think definitely get the kids involved, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, it can be, again, even little kids can, you know, put things in a, in a ba baggie and zip lock mm -hmm. and stick it in the fridge or whatever. Um, and you can kind of make a game about it. You know, do it after dinner, right when you're cleaning up. and 
that's good. Yeah, I organized my pantry. I mm -hmm. had to, you know, buy the long trays. If you if it you make it organized where the kids can go and get what mm -hmm. the granola bars are, the little sections, it makes it easier for them to help you right. pack. Um, the lunches and invest in good storage containers. Mm, the one right. with the sandwiches. A lot of times, the, by the time they get to school, when I was buying the cheaper ones, the sandwiches get all soggy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or my daughters, when they were taking salad, it was just you know the lettuce had wilted. Mm -hmm. Take the time and just go ahead and invest in it, and it saves you a lot of money over time. Yeah, yeah. especially if you don't look for the snack sizes of things. You yeah. know, get a get a big bag or big box of something, mm -hmm. and, but not always Sam's either, because you have to you have to check prices. Yeah. And I, and I bought some of the really quality food containers mm -hmm. that would keep cold things really cold yeah. and hot things really mm -hmm. hot. Mm -hmm. And then if I had made uh, somebody's favorite meal for dinner the night before, they got leftovers for yeah. lunch and they weren't unhappy about yeah. it because That's it was nice. their favorite. That's mm -hmm. good. Well, uh, what about um, keeping it affordable? What are some affordable options that you guys have found? Well, do it, do it yourself. Uh -huh. do, it, do it yourself. I was telling you all on the break about um, my homemade Lunchables. If you just go ahead and buy the big box of Rick's crackers and then the long block of cheese and then the meats, just create your own Lunchable. Mm -hmm. You can do that even with the, the little flatbreads, how they have the little pizzas mm -hmm. and the pepperoni mm -hmm. and the cheese. Mm -hmm. You can create a lot of do-it-yourself Lunchables like that. It's a yeah. lot cheaper. And I've, yeah. I don't know about you, but I've always found when I buy the Lunchables, there's always something that the kids don't like anyway. So yeah. this way you can make something exactly tailored to their... Yeah. Right. And if you cut up your own fruit, you're going to have less bacteria in it because the, the manufacturers, when they cut it up, you know, you've got all those manufacturing bacteria in there, and this is going to be so much better for them. Mm -hmm. Very good. Some great advice this morning. Um, any last second thoughts? We, you know, I still go back to the garden. We've still got things growing, so we'll slice up cucumbers, and those will go in the baggie for lunch, something healthy, mm -hmm. something good, and something fresh. Perfect. Mm -hmm. We're going to be back in just a mm -hmm. moment. Stay with us. Welcome back to Good Day. Well, school's kicking off, and kids have to get some shots and things before they end up going back to school. Or do they? Some kids don't. So that's what we're talking about this morning, the pros and cons between immunizations, vaccinations. We've heard that there's a difference between the two, so we're kind of throwing all of that out in the ring. But um, first, Janet, you have something very interesting to add about um, your expertise with shaken baby syndrome and the way that this goes hand in hand. Uh, well, as you know, that's what I did in Florida for 20 years, and a big part of my training program with new parents was to say to them, when you start this, if you make the decision to start these immunizations, anybody that's had a child that's had their immunizations knows that children get really cranky and really fussy because they hurt. Mm -hmm. um, and we see so many children that are actually shaken on that day. Mm -hmm. My granddaughter, Kimberlyn, was shaken on the day she got her immunization. So what I would say to parents is, it, is to be prepared. If you can take the day off and be home, with your child and be prepared to have a fussy child. Mm -hmm. And if the doctor says to give the child something like a set of minifin, do it because it will help the child feel better. But, you know, be prepared. The one thing that we say is children don't die from crying. They do die if an adult can't just take that deep breath and walk away. Mm -hmm. Have a strategy for you where you can go in the other room, take a hot bath, call somebody just mm -hmm. to talk it out, whatever you need to do, but have a plan for what you're going to do before you get frustrated because I guarantee you sometime within the first six months of your child's life you'll be frustrated mm -hmm. and on that day of those vaccinations you will be very frustrated. Well, thank you for sharing that great advice. So throwing it on the table, what's going on? One of the things that uh, I think most people don't realize is they don't have to have vaccinations in order to go to school. In Georgia, there are medical and religious exemptions that are available. All 50 states actually have uh, exemptions available except Mississippi and West Virginia. Georgia is one of the smarter ones in allowing that, realizing that we are people of individuals in America. Uh, a lot of people when they study the vaccinations and they begin to read the patient inserts and they begin to look into this, they begin to think, wait a minute, this is not just a little bit of dead virus and a little bit of sterile water. There's a whole lot of other things in there. And a lot of the things that they list on those patient inserts, those serious, serious side effects, they really happen. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's frightening because in the vaccinations have yeah. changed so much over the years since my kids were little you know my oldest child is 16 years old and I actually got a letter one time from one of the schools saying that she needed to have an additional sh shot or she couldn't come back mm -hmm. and I'm like what additional shot and they 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 
the doctor was saying that it was a change that they needed to have this shot put on here and I think it was a uh, I can't even remember. Um, but I have so many questions about the ones, I mean, even with mm -hmm. the, the flu shot, mm -hmm. you know, because of the uh, reaction that this one little boy I heard about in the news, he died because he was allergic to eggs. Mm -hmm. And HPV shot, I think a lot of people are uneducated on that, and you were giving us some wonderful information on that on the break. A, a lot of people don't realize, they'll, they'll think that, okay, I need to take the flu shot or I need to take the flu mist. They might think that that is safer, but they don't realize that people who get those shots actually end up being hospitalized more often than if they don't get those shots mm -hmm. and those are actually from a study by the Mayo Clinic where they were trying to find out and people may say oh well but if your child has asthma this is more necessary however children who have asthma who get the flu vaccine or they get the flu mist they actually end up spending t more time in the hospital than if they haven't gotten that and then when you come down to Gardasil or the HPV vaccine uh, it really doesn't work and you have a lot of people who have died after having this severe severe neurological reactions to it girls who get the shot and immediately faint one girl who immediately fainted and broke her nose you know you have people who die very shortly after that spend a long pe long period of time in the hospital or have their ovaries just completely shut down and yet the human body is set up to deal with all the different strains of HPV there are many strains I, I forget something like 80 different strains mm -hmm. And if you have that strain in your body, typically within two years, your body's going to get rid of it. We're going to be back in just a moment talking more about vaccinations, immunizations. Stay with us. Welcome back to Good Day. We're talking about vaccinations and we've learned a lot about kind of, you know, the reasons that people are afraid to get vaccinations for their children. What about those of you who have decided to get your children vaccinated for various reasons? Would you guys mind sharing your thoughts on your decisions why to get them? Well, um, we've just some of the younger uh, younger child vaccinations we have chosen to get. Um, polio is one of them. My husband's um, stepfather had polio as a child and um, had severe you know results with that so we decided so we really do it on a case by case we chosen against um, chicken pox and um, the, uh, HPV. the HPV for health reasons um, but we we don't have a generally broad statement against yes or no we, mm -hmm. we, we can think about them Yes, now I know um, that some of you who have older kids, um, mm -hmm. back years ago, these things didn't seem to come up as much about, you know, learning about these right. things. So do you feel like um, this is something, like, when, is this something you researched those years ago with your older kids? I didn't. I mean, mm -hmm. I was a young mom and mm -hmm. my mom told me this is one of the things you do. You're yeah. going to take your baby yeah. and get his shots. Yeah. And, you know, this was in the 70s, and, and all my friends were taking their babies, and, you know, so, and it just wasn't anything that we, we thought we were doing the, right the best, right thing mm -hmm. to protect our children by doing this. Mm -hmm. yeah. I started off doing all the vaccinations exactly on time, mm -hmm. and it was a nurse who dropped a little piece of information in my lap that made me think, what? Mm -hmm. These are not as safe as I thought. And so I began by telling my doctor, I want to read the patient insert first. Mm -hmm. And I would read the patient insert, and I said, uh, no no we're gonna to have to find a different one and so my doctor would give me a different one mm, no and the more information I got mm. the more I became concerned about actually the safety and the efficacy of them and I just that began a whole lot of study on it and actually my last two children were almost complete well my last child is completely unvaccinated and the one before that only had two sets of shots any of you who chose to get vaccinations for your kids, did you see any adverse effects or anything? Was there any red flags that came up? Mine did. Uh, my children always did good with the vaccinations. Mm -hmm. my, I, I did what my mom and the doctor told me, make mm -hmm. sure I take, give them the Tylenol mm -hmm. prior to the shot. And then at, during that time, I was an at-home mom with them when they were younger. So they did really, really well. It's, 
I'm like Jenna, I was a young mom, that was what you do. That's and right. then when they started, you had to turn over their then immunization mm -hmm. records when they had to start school. Mm -hmm. um, so I always thought that I was making a good decision. It's kind of upsetting now when you, you know, to not be educated. More. Because the schools told us, well, this is what you have to do. The mm -hmm. doctors said this is what you need mm -hmm. to do. But as I've grown older and my kids have gotten old, older, you know, I have people that's in my family that's in the health profession, Google. I like to research mm -hmm. what they're putting in my child before they do it. And in some instances, we had to say, no, don't give them that shot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, go ahead. NVIC.org is a good place to get information on the other side. Bill Gates and Google have decided that they're going to put the anti-vaccination websites way down in the search engine so it can be, become difficult to do mm -hmm. a lot of that research. But if you start off with some of the anti-vaccination sites such as NVIC.org or DrTenpenny.org, you can find more information that way. Okay. Is this something that um, you feel like, I guess because we kind of talked about how it's been kind of new coming up here, um, researching this, do you find that it's been harder to find information or confusing? How do you guys feel about the whole thing in general? I'm blessed to have a, a nurse, and my, my sister's a nurse, and my um, sister-in-law is a PEA. So I'm blessed to have people that's in the family, you know, way that knows more about it. Mm -hmm. um, but it is, if you try to go online yourself, and then it's, like I said, the terms, you really don't know what you're reading. Mm -hmm. So they can break it down to me in English. Yeah. Because I find, frankly, at least in my experience, pediatricians give me a lot of pushback. They don't, they don't really want me to be educated. They mm -hmm. want me to do what they, yeah. you know, what their plan is. Right. And it's kind of discouraging. So it sounds like just definitely everybody needs to make sure to research it and find out what is best for your family and for your ethics that you feel they are. We want to thank Debbie Sapp for coming thank on. You. Thank you so much for being our honorary mom today. You guys can uh, go to MySouthwestG.com for more information. We'll be back in the morning at 5 a.m.